man is so attractive. <laughs> Can't be horny on me. Don't do it, Angie. Don't do it. See, over here, you can tell he's like really far away because her arms are like literally outstretched. Should I put that or should I edit that out? Oh my gosh, I sound like such a pervert. Oh, bleh. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Angelita and we are going to react to episode 5 of season 3 of Bridgerton today. And full disclosure, I have seen all the episodes in part 2. So these are going to be like a second pass through the episode. I... Yeah. Something possessed me at 12 a.m. on the 13th of June and I just like sat there till like 3.30 watching all the episodes so... I'm sorry, okay? But I feel like since I've already seen them, I'll be able to like dissect the episodes a little bit more and like give more of like my thoughts and feelings about how things played out this season. Yeah, I thought I would like get it out of the way with my first pass and like watch it with you guys again. So I did see episode five um, during the Tudum event that happened yesterday or you know, whenever you're watching this, it's gonna be the 12th of June. And I was so pissed off <laughs> with that event. They made us wait like two hours just to watch this episode. I I was livid. I'm like, I am wasting two hours of my life watching stuff that I could have watched later on. I did wait those two hours and I did get to watch the episode and um, you know what, let's just watch it again and see how I feel. Honestly, my honest gut reaction after watching episode five for the first time, I was really underwhelmed. I'm not gonna lie. But we are gonna do this again because I haven't seen it since the first time. I, when the episodes dropped, at midnight, I immediately went to episode 6, so this is gonna be my first time watching it again. I got an emotional support pillow to help me out, give it the content that we're gonna see this episode. I think I'm gonna need it. And I have a cup of coffee, I have some refreshments to help me get through it, so let's just dive right into it. Dearest reader, she looks well, beautiful. Not him stopping to take her hand back. He's like, it's you and me against the world. So cute. Aww. Okay, hold up. This frame of them is so freaking cute. Like she looks like so tiny and so like little compared to him and he's just like holding onto her hand and it's, it's the cutest shit ever. Like when I saw the seal for this, I was like, cute, 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 two cutie patooties together. Announcement came with He looks great so happy. We are engaged. Okay, this is so funny. Like he doesn't even like say, hi family, how are you? He's like, we're here for business. I am engaged. Notice me. We're all so happy. Thank you, Lady Bridget. <laughs> okay, this moment is so important to me because Penelope has never had like a good maternal figure in her life. We do find out the stuff with Portia, like she is a product of her circumstances and that's why she kind of raised Penelope the way she did. But I'm so, so happy that she has Violet in her life now to like really show her what she's been missing out on for all these years. And I just, you can see it in her eyes. Like baby girl is like so happy to be officially a part of the Bridgerton family right now. And I'm just so happy for her. How long have you had feelings for him? Let's unpack this. So Eloise has had no idea that Penelope has been pining for Colin for all these years. They had a really good friendship. I'm not going to say that friendship is bad, but a lot of times I feel like their friendship catered to Eloise specifically. It didn't really cater to Penn as much. And you can really see that come out in the dialogue right now. You can also see the expression on Penn's face. Like, how did you not know? Like, I was your best friend and you had no idea and it's just um yeah it's it's hard and i can't even be mad at l at all because she is in a tough situation like her ex-best friend is getting engaged to her brother and harboring this huge secret that can like change the dynamic of her marriage her potential marriage and it's it's a really hard place to be because she's keeping this from her brother from her blood and if i were elise i would have reacted the same way like i just can't fault l like i know she did a lot of things last season to seriously piss me off but i empathize with the position she's in this season i feel like her anger makes a lot of sense and it's not displaced it's very reasonable to be coming from that place we'll be well Colin is such a himbo and I love him for it. I Okay, I, I am an Anthony girl, but this season, 
Colin really did something for me, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> he's just so sweet and he has like this innate goodness in him that's kind of borderline a hero complex but at the same time he genuinely cares for the people he loves and it really translates through Luke's acting here and he's just the sweetest, like stop. Stop. Okay, I was I was gagged when I saw this during the to them event. I'm like they changed the intro like that's that's kind of insane. But yeah, that means that uh, we're in for a ride this season. I'm so indifferent towards the storyline. I'm just like mm. this is not his forever person. That's why I'm just not invested in it. It's just it doesn't add much to his character. Like it's nice, but I'm just not invested in it. You might want to read this one as well. <laughs> the brother's engaged. <laughs> Benedict's reaction, like Luke Thompson, you are an absolute gem. Mama must have read a great deal when she was pregnant with you then. She <laughs> back to me. Papa spitting their tea out. That is so funny. That is so satisfying for Penelope, isn't it not? For beauty, it certainly makes up for an entertainment. Mm. Honestly, some of the subplots I feel like they could have taken that out and kind of put in the book Agatha Danbury and Penelope Featherington dynamic. Um, they did have a nod to it in the last episode, but I like the fact that they have like subtle knots here too, but I feel like they, they could have added that. Like I really love that dynamic between Lady D and Penelope in the book and the fact that they decided to put that on the chopping block for the most part. It, it makes me a, a tad bit sad, but honestly overall the season has been good. I'm not gonna lie. And then my sparkler refuses the lemonade from my Marquis. We're still on that lemonade. <laughs> okay, I just cannot take the storyline seriously. Just because we have seen Queen Charlotte and she just, the Queen just is so much more of a developed character in that series and she has like, she's multifaceted, she has more to herself, she has more to her story. Her character has been like written, in my opinion, impeccably in that series. To have her like revert back to her like matchmaking shtick again in this season, it's just like so dissatisfying to me. Because she can be so much more but she gets reduced every season to the same thing where she is meddling with the Bridgerton siblings and trying to get them aired off and then ultimately she's unsuccessful every single time and it's just it's getting a little tired honestly. And instead on John Sterling, Earl of Kilmartin. Mm -hmm. Certainly a fine man. They love him. And she's displeased. Or... You know I didn't understand that expression. I probably have to watch the scene. <gasps> Never mind, guys, it's my favorite couple. I hope you are thinking pure thoughts. Considering just the being cutie patinis. I am simply enjoying the view of my ravishing wife. I'm soon to be mother of my child. <laughs> <laughs> They're so cute. Let's take a moment to appreciate Simone Ashley's face card. Because look at the outfit they freaking put her on. What the fuck? <laughs> like, what is that earthy tone? It's hideous. But she makes it work because she's just that beautiful of a person. Love that. Love that for her. Rocking out gold jewelry that's like very, you know, as a South Asian person, like that's very in touch with the culture. And yeah, she looks absolutely beautiful. Her hair is beautiful. It's just that outfit. Hideous. Who the fuck put her in that dress? It's just... I have a bone to pick with you. Like... You tried to make her look ugly, but you did not succeed, thankfully. For all of my friends are here! <laughs> I am so happy for these two! They're so happy they're gonna have a baby. Like, oh. Johnny Bailey's acting as Anthony this season has been so refreshing because he's just not broody and pining the whole time. He's just so happy to be loved to be with his wife and it's just so so stinking cute we're back in bridgerton house yeah. <laughs> they're all so happy colin is engaged to penelope featherington <laughs> hyacinth may be the most excited of us all <laughs> look at kate's face <laughs> look at anthony's face he's like i i missed a couple chapters in this house like what what the fuck what just happened <laughs> he looks so <laughs> unabused he's like what the fuck? <laughs> Thank you. I'm in high spirits. Okay, I ha I have to say though, Colin is looking really nice in this outfit. Very very nice. It's it's doing it for me. <laughs> okay, another thing. I see the detailing on the collar region 
for Anthony and I feel like that's like an Indian kind of stitch like it feels very like it feels like something I've seen my mom wear um I'm South Asian myself so it feels like patterns I've seen growing up that's really sweet that Kate's you know Indian heritage kind of like bleeds into his clothing too and that's that's so beautiful like they're really matching their cultures together and I think that little bit of detail just like adds so much to the scene it's absolutely beautiful so cute <laughs> I think of you as the family pet. <laughs> right. That's so unnecessary. Hi, so they're so cute. Yes, we do. Oh. She used me. That is the only conclusion one can draw. Uh. Do you know she in fact met my brother first? Friendship must have been a ruse to get to him all along. No. It's a good thing your friendship is long over then. My parents have told me this morning that they are in the process of arranging a marriage proposal. Mm. That's not great. Is he not on death's doorstep? <laughs> Sadly, no. So Sadly. Like he is. He has assured my father he is the picture of health. I have to say though, this is like one of the more toned down versions of Cressida's clothing. It's like strutting that line between camp and like Bridgerton-esque vibe. I feel like it, it fits right in. Her hair is still like pushing it, but the outfit, I feel like it's very um, in line with what they were in society, not like too Cressida-esque out of the ordinary kind of clothing. Yeah, yeah the sleeves are- Sleeves are calm today. Explain. <laughs> Explain. <laughs> Come now, you must admit it's all rather southern. Well, it is. Southern was my last betrothal, so I cannot blame. Oh yeah. You. We all remember I that. For Penelope, and not a thunderbolt from the sky. I have known her. It did all happen rather swiftly. Yeah, you did uh, other things. <laughs> you... Are you going to duel with your own brother? <laughs> oh. That's so sweet. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. I love this scene. I love this scene. More scenes of the siblings together. The show is literally called Bridgerton. We want more Bridgerton content. It's not a mind-blowing concept. More scenes like that. Like I know having a lot of actors at the same time in a scene prolongs the filming time or whatever. Like I've heard something about like every time you add in a person like the time like extends exponentially or something. Like I'm I don't know anything about film and TV but I've heard that's the case and what they could do is they could like break it down like have like two or in this case three siblings at a time and show us the dynamic between them. I really enjoy that like I feel like we need more of that. Please Bridgerton if you ever see this video which I really don't think you ever will but if you just just throw in that idea out there just please consider. <laughs> so excited to see his wifey. <laughs> <laughs> Oof, this one's a difficult one. I need coffee for this one. Throwing that away to play out what? A fancy on the neighbor boy who happens to be the most desired man of the season. I do not think it's unreasonable. Has he told you that he loves you? Ooh. She knew where exactly to hurt her and that's... That's that's really sad. That's really sad. Because anyone would go to their family to seek comfort and support. But for Penelope, I feel like whenever she has gone to her family for something, she's always been kind of put down, demoralized, or not given the comfort that she's seeking. That's why she did not, you know, tell anyone that she was engaged to Colin and they had to find out through whistle down. It shows you a little bit more of the dynamic that we all suspect is happening in that household and it's just sad. It's heartbreaking. But things are gonna turn for the better because I've seen the rest of the season and I just, I cannot wait to like see those scenes again and like really sink my teeth into them. Using Lord knows what wiles to entrap him. That's, Excuse that's me. a little blow. Mr. Bridgerton is here. Mr. I am still speaking. That was so hot. <laughs> I'm just a girl. I'm just a girl. Hmm. To call it take a charge is so attractive. Like... <laughs> Nah, <laughs> maybe I should stop talking. Can't be horny on me. Don't do it, Angie. Don't do it. Your daughter did not entrap me. The look on I her eyes. I her out of love. Nothing less. <laughs> Most eligible amongst you. Nicola Coughlin's acting really popped off in the scene. It's like you can see that having those words said to her means so much to her because her life has been absolutely devoid of words of affirmation like it's not something she receives in that household and to have someone she loves stand up for her in that way it just means so much and Nicola has done a perfect job like conveying that through her facial expressions it's just absolutely beautiful I advise you not to sully our Bridgerton name also he said our Bridgerton name in his head she's already Penelope Bridgerton <laughs> this man has 
big D energy. Like, what can I say? I shouldn't say that. Maybe I'll cut that out. You know what? Most people click off the video in like the first few seconds, but the real ones, I'm, I'm gonna keep that in there. This man has big D energy and I love it. It's, it's, it's that scene, guys. It's that scene. I wanted to show you this before our wedding. Oh, cute. He's so excited for their future this together. He said, this will be your home. I know it does not look like much now. Oh my gosh. Once we lay out so some flustered. of our furnishings and decorations. Oh. <laughs> you do not realize how much that meant to me. What you said to my mother. No one has ever stood up for me like that. I will always stand up for you. Because I love you. Oh. Look at her eyes. This scene was perfect like i did have mixed feelings when i first saw it the thing is that luke's delivery of his lines are very subtle i know a lot of people like compare him a little bit with johnny bailey just because johnny is like very expressive and luke's approach is different just because colin is a fundamentally different character and i feel like we all kind of like go blank on that fact sometimes just because most of us we want an expressive person but the way he delivers that line he says i love you it's a very matter of fact thing like it's it's like i love you it's a very simple thing like it's not complicated it's what he has in his heart in that moment and that's what he tells penelope and the expression on penelope's face like oh my gosh my heart breaks my heart absolutely breaks seeing that like it's just oh, such beautiful acting on both of their part it's a beautiful scene he's like yeah i am sure you are the cleverest mm -hmm. bravest woman i've ever known you i love wonderful. the expression on her face like nicola your acting this season has been phenomenal like i i really hope you get the recognition you deserve not just Nicola, Luke too, but like Nicola is really like, you can see like the scared little girl. It's very rare and in between how much she's heard like positive things said to her about herself. And that coming from the man she's in love with, it's just, it means so much to her. And it's just, it gives me goosebumps. Like it's, I'm so happy for her and she is like so deserving of this. And then there's... The I love hair. the shot. Like the shot, amazing. Like, the way her hair, like, cascades out, it's beautiful. The skate yes. on the shop. The way your eyes. And this is where things kind of went south. Why did we switch over to a voiceover? Like, I, I want to know. It, it's not working. It's absolutely not working. We have established that her having heard these things are very important to you know her building up that confidence and that self-esteem i would have rather wanted to see us like dwell in that moment for a little bit longer i know that's gonna prolong the whole scene a little bit i feel like it's very important for penelope's character development shine when you look at me like two blue pools dialogue's really good i would have had him like no, say no. it see and mm -hmm. then they switch over to him saying it again it's just there is some dissonance there i i really wish they would have like kept the part where he actually says the words i feel like that would have been more impactful yeah we get the boot grab <laughs> i love the fact that book canon colin is a boot grabber and so is show canon colin the book fans really won and honestly i want to i love it i love it <laughs> look decent is so hot like I, i'm so sorry i didn't see it before but i see it now it's this man is so attractive <sighs> This one I got the pillow. <laughs> and also the fact that they chose POV by Ariana Grande. Now, I love Ariana's music and this is probably one of my favorite songs of Ariana's and like A plus to whoever chose the song. I want to kiss you on the mouth. You made the right call and I love you for it. I've never liked chest hair but the Bridgerton men really make me think otherwise. Just very hot. Very hot. Do I really want to say this? Okay. Belt buckles, I don't think they existed during Regency time, but whoever made the executive decision to have Luke Newton have a belt buckle in the scene, I want to kiss you on the mouth too, thank you. <laughs> Girl, I'm looking at the same way. I am no better. <laughs> you are so beautiful. Words of affirmation, we love to see it. Her hair is so pretty in the scene. I think this is very book accurate. It's been a hot minute since I've read Romancing Mr. Richardson. Actually, it hasn't been that long. It's been probably two months and I've already forgotten. 
what happened during the first time but I think it's pretty similar from what I remember and I love that she's taking agency in the scene like it's it's so pivotal because we're trying to establish that Penelope is like on the trajectory of building up her confidence so I, I love that they show her like taking charge and taking agency and being like I want to be an active participant in this too. I feel like it's it's great like it's just a great thing showing that women have desires because you know media kind of has always kind of shied away from it but I love like in a show like Bridgerton you know that's in the forefront and female pleasure is on the forefront you know I love to see it. You could touch me. Also I want to say Luke Needham's voice in this scene like you can tell it's not his regular voice because I feel like his voice is like I want to say like an octave higher or like a couple octaves higher I, I don't know but his voice is very very low which is very appropriate to the scene because you know he's like doing things which you know kind of brings it down to a baritone and that's a smart acting choices like we'll love to see it anyway very raspy voice love it <laughs> You really said don't make me finish before I finish. <laughs> yeah. Consent. We love that. I ugh, do I really want to say this? You know what? I'm gonna do it. We're just gonna keep this ball rolling. If I don't like it, I can just edit this out. But yeah, I wanted to say I really wish they hadn't had that first time on this lounge just because it's really awkward. You can see that this is not very big for Luke. Like he's just like physically a little too big for this piece of furniture and then to make space for himself and Nicola it kind of felt a little awkward to be honest when he was like on top I felt like the distance between the two was a little too much should I really get into this I'm like waging a war with it myself but I'm gonna say it anyway it's just because like why the fuck not let's just do it you know I know that actors when they film these kind of scenes they have like barriers in place just because you know you don't want to be touching person to person you know that way professionalism like very obvious thing but um at the same time you have to make the scene look believable she is lying down on the lounge and like the distance is really a lot to the point where i can tell it like takes me out of it like i can tell they're not making contact with each other i know that as an audience member but at the same time this is what the scene wants to be showing us you know to be depicting i might be being a little nitpicky but i just don't think they should have had their first time on a lounge we could have gotten a bed or could have done it on the floor I sound like a very nasty person but like intimacy scenes are big in a show like Bridgerton like it's very pivotal to the storyline. I have no idea how actors shoot these kind of scenes because if it were me I'd be like what are we? <laughs> See over here you can tell he's like really far away because her arms are like literally outstretched. Should I put that or should I edit that out? Oh my gosh I sound like such a pervert oh bleh. but you see my point right like it's like outstretched hands trying to reach onto him to his shoulders like it's a lot of distance for Nicola she's a tiny person I mean the scene is sweet but I have to say though I was underwhelmed when I first saw it because I feel like people built it up to be this huge scene and I I already saw the spoilers for the scene beforehand so I was very underwhelmed when I first saw it. The more I watch it I feel like I catch different things here and there. I do appreciate the scene a little bit more but when I first saw it I was uh, like mm. I might be class as public enemy number one after putting this out there but like that's just my opinion. I just didn't feel that scene that everyone else was feeling after seeing this. To me still the carrot scene is just so much more like hotter than this scene. That's just my opinion. I'm so sorry. Give <laughs> me five minutes. Maybe ten. <laughs> He's like I need recovery time girl. <laughs> Aww. This is my little cutie patooties. Jonathan Bailey is acting. He like really leans into that down badism that we just want to see from a male character. He just like he gives the people what they want. And I love that for us. <laughs> <laughs> the expression on his face. <laughs> and Jonathan Bailey really sells it. Like his chemistry, like you can tell he's still like moving his thumb across her shoulder. Like he really sells the fact that they are a married couple. They're very much in love and 
they're very affectionate with each other. Is this the only reason you wish to delay our news? He's like, I want to scream it from the rooftops, what? girl. Oh, so I the fact that they took inspiration from like a sari to make her dress. Thank you from all the South Asian people out there. I want to thank whoever took that decision. Like, I, I love you and I will give you my first one child. Simple. My sister Daphne had just begun her lessons and I begged Mama to let me sit with her as she learned. You love a little nod to Daphne. I miss her. It's almost nauseating how perfect they are <laughs> together. Almost. Anthony but. is nauseatingly cute. Nauseous. I concur. I hope my husband will not hide my piano stool from me. <laughs> I would not dream of it. He said, I would not dream of it. Okay. I see you, Mr. Kilmartin, making those moves. I see you. Very subtle. I like that. Love to see her as my countess. She's a natural. <laughs> Fruit jellies it is. <laughs> I love this. How about waiting to see more scenes of Kate and Eloise since last season? Because they have had little bonding moments in season two. And the fact that there's a nice little callback to that and like it really shows like how much their relationship has developed into a really nice friendship. Well right now it's a sisterhood because she is a part of the family and I think that's absolutely beautiful. This is where I, I think the show really shines because you see these little mini dynamics throughout the show like of all the siblings and their interactions and I just think it's, it's the crowning jewel of the season. Besides the main couple, of course, because we're primarily here for the romance, but this is just so touching to see, and it's so beautiful. A solicitor poking into Jack Featherington. He wants to see you again. I just never want to hear Jack Featherington ever again. I have very strong PTSD from season two. Look at this, cuties. Aftercare, we love that. <laughs> if I had to revise a scene in my headcanon, I would have had him kiss her forehead and then say the line. I think that would have been more endearing. I mean, it's great the way they did it. It's very effortless and like seamlessly integrated into the scene, but I would have had them add a little bit more of like physical affection to like really hammer the line home. Cause this is an iconic line from the book. I would have approached it a different way and I like my version better. No offense, Luke. I love you. I really do. But like, you could have done a little bit more. And I love that she's like, engaging in physical touch because he has verbalized that he likes that. That's a really nice touch from Nicola's part. I'm looking so disrespectfully at his torso and maybe other parts. I'm not really enjoying Queen Charlotte's storylines. It's always the same. It's always meddling in the marriage part or we're going out to whistle down. It's always these two and it's a bit of a letdown. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Colin. <laughs> feel like cannot people see us. Okay, another thing I caught, I think they forgot to cover up Nicola's tattoo. I think she has like a little tattoo here. You can see it. What is it? Oh, the way yes, she snuggles up next to it. Dearest members of my most esteemed Yikes. Tom, I hereby declare that whoever brings legitimate evidence of Lady Whistledown's Her necklace looks so good. Palace, Don't come at me. <laughs> He pulls her in. Cute, cute, cute. I mean, she's in disarray, but he's just such a happy man. Love that. It's all gonna go downhill, but I love it for the moment. Colin looks so dapper. Like, it's. it's I've been looking for you. It's concerning how I feel about this man. But I love her, Al, in more ways than I can even express. Perhaps Penelope, that, and Penelope and I are going to be Donkey. That is so cute. We are going to be knights. <laughs> Such a rough spot she's in. I can't imagine being in her shoes. Our daughter, Lord Greer. Well, this should, is should we marry, we shall be absolutely disgusting. He is a prehistoric fossil. Like, how do they not see that this is not a good match? Absolutely disgusting. I would jump off a tall cliff right now if that were me. Like, like the way her eyes pop out, like, girl, you have my sympathies. You shall not abuse your sister in this household. Portia taking a stand. Who would have thunk it? Not me. We'll give you two time to deliberate on how best to amend your behavior towards your sister. She is reprimanding them. Great she necklace. The Great necklace. <laughs> how does Colin like concentrate? I don't know. I'm no better. He's learned so quickly. The pink looks so pretty on Alice. It's you don't think we're unreal. Back at Bertrandton house. It's the engagement party. Love to see it. Kate as Viscountess. 
Perhaps eating will make your brain big enough to finally fill that hat. Oh, oh. <laughs> I said, damn. Oh, a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Lord Kent. Are they going to play a part in Hyson's book? Like, I, I have a feeling. <laughs> My bride to be. Stop it. Stop. And here's my son to be. <laughs> it is pleasant to receive such a warm greeting from you. I love the delivery on that. He's saying warm, but his delivery is cold. Nice touch. Nice touch, Lou. Mm -hmm. Anyone? You're so cute. You Paula stands really took wins, like big fat wins this season. I'm so jelly, but I'm also living for it, not gonna lie. Of course, just excuse me. You look so happy. I love happy Paula. Either my brother is the most so understanding person ever born or you have not yet told him. Yeah, and now I feel like I just it is not got doused with cold water. Also, I find it interesting he got himself what looked like wine and he got her lemonade. Does this man know that he has impregnated her? Like I... Mm, hmm. Oh my gosh, calling you dog. Uh, Lady Arnold, please uh, allow me to introduce you to my sister, Lady Bridgeton. Also, can we appreciate the fact that Benedict just introduced Kate as his sister? <laughs> sister! They will get along really well. I can really see a friendship forming between Tilly and Kate. He's literally me in a social situation. Like, I love the representation of socially awkward people got this season. Yes, but do you not think that Francesca could in fact use some I've heard this conversation about myself so many times. Like, queen is opposed. get out of your shell. Like, I don't know why experts are so obsessed with getting us out of our shells. Like, we're happy in the shells. Just like, let us be. You mock. <laughs> then be extra friendly. It's so funny. You will allow me a few words. He's like, hold my fork. And to never taking a single day with you for granted. Congratulations. <laughs> that was so cute. And now Eloise is gonna be like, I have something to say. That's why she got the fork. I see. Knowing each other. Yowzers. Yowzers. Before the clock runs out. Some dessert. And charades in the drawing room. Kate being a lovely fight countess, like I never thought I'd see this day. Lilies, forget me not. Lilac. <sighs> Can we take a moment to talk about Anthony just screaming lilacs, like lilies? Oh, lilies! This man has said lilies last season, and that did something to my brain. I'm sorry, I'm getting flashbacks. Anyway, let's let's continue watching. <laughs> I really do think they're trying to establish a storyline with. These two, these two Bridgertons and the Mondridges. They're trying to like put in like the foundation right now. My hole can lead to pots of gold, ending years of struggle. I don't understand any of these. Like, am I not dumb? You do not think I'm clever enough. No, that is not Ooh, what I meant. that I was the wrong myself. thing to say. And you are far more clever than I. Lord Kilmartin, are you the way Franny looks at him yes, is so you. endearing. Finally, look down to discover a phantom waltz in front. Oh, it's me. <laughs> Ruth Gamble, you're acting um, amazing. Something Lady Richard, I will not be for much longer. <laughs> He's literally talking about his wife without knowing it. That's just so funny. Certainly, any hope of marriage. Interesting. Interesting line there. Oof. Feels like a little bit of a pressure cooker of an episode, doesn't it? We'll make our way with our child when we have always done with each other. They're so stinking cute. Like, who gave these two bitches the right to be this cute? Like, who? Aw, uh, Colin is very in tune with her, and I really appreciate that. Surely. To mention the money. <laughs> the wheels in our head are turning. Aw, oh, Colin. Coming to see her. You're expecting <laughs> oh, You're so happy. <laughs> I've never been this happy about a fictional baby in my life. They just wanted to amp up the drama. That's what they're doing three different things at the same time. So yeah, it was it was a really good episode. I feel like the first time I watched it, just because I had to wait two hours in that stupid freaking Tidum event, I was just like really pissed off. So I didn't really watch it with full attention. I really like the episode now that I've seen it again. And I feel like I like the intimacy scene a little bit better 
Just because the first time I was like, eh, it's, it's whatever. But yeah, they really try to orchestrate things in a way that like really amps up the drama. And I like that. Eloise is in a really tough spot, as you can see. And then the stuff happening with Kate and Anthony, I am a fan of. Like I, I love seeing these two suckers happy and in love and like expecting their child that Unfortunately, we're not gonna see because if you have seen episode 8, you know what's gonna happen. It's gonna be another off-screen thing. Tragic. I love Colin and Penn together. I think they're so cute. It's so endearing seeing them interact and just be happy and be in that honeymoon phase. But at the same time, you have this whole whistle down thing that's causing so much tension and so much friction. And Colin is catching on to the fact that something is wrong with Penn, but he's also projecting his inner insecurities in those moments because he thinks that Penn doesn't deem him worthy and she just doesn't see him in that way but in actuality something else is happening entirely and he's like not aware of that. He is catching on to something but it's on the wrong way Lynn. And yeah I feel like that's that adds to Colin's character because I feel like we have spent more time with Penelope so we know her more as a character but we don't know much about Colin and I like that they're kind of introducing these themes with this character and really showing us that this is a character that has insecurities and he is not perfect and he meets well, he has good intentions. He's really trying to see what's lacking for Penelope and really trying to pinpoint that but he's just messing the mark a little bit. I really like that. It was an interesting exploration into his mindset, into the way he thinks. The whole Cressida thing, I'm not very invested in Cressida as a character. Like I empathize with her stance, all the things she's going through as a woman, like that is a very difficult position to be in. But at the same time, like she is kind of also like a plot device in there to create conflict and make the storyline more enticing. I almost want to fast forward through those scenes. Like, yes, I feel for her, but at the same time, I'm not that drawn into the storyline that they have for her and how much they have like incorporated her into the plot for this season. I know it's like true to the books because Cressida does have quite a pivotal role in romancing Mr. Bridgerton, but I don't know. I was not that into it and that's unfortunate. I feel like there are so many characters. Like I just don't have the bandwidth to care about every single character the same way. Obviously, everyone is going to care for some characters more than others and unfortunately Cresta falls near the bottom for me. I'm just not feeling it. Anyway, but as a whole I really enjoyed episode a lot more than my first watch. Um, I'll definitely rewatch it a couple more times to like really see if I missed out on anything. Yeah, I'll catch you guys in the new video very soon. Take care of yourselves, be kind to yourself and to others, and do not sweat the small stuff. Reminder to myself really, don't sweat the small stuff. I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching. I will catch you for the reaction to episode 6 very very soon. Bye!